Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Um, welcome this evening to this another evening where we look into the scriptures and study the word of God. Um, welcome, 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 wel welcome, welcome, Rima Life Changing Ministries and the, the, the family. We welcome you this evening to this another evening. Truly, it is awesome to to be here. It is a privilege that I do um, see as a real honor and a blessing of God to be joined with you and to discuss the scripture with you and to see the hidden mysteries and the hidden, hidden truth of God's word. Praise the name of the Lord. I know that um, the weather on the outside is 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 great, and um, you know persons might want to be on the outside enjoying the great weather. But I say to you, we are on Facebook, and so if you need to go outside and and sit down and enjoy, yes, you can do so. But you still want to do so as we study and dive into the Word of the Lord. God is truly an awesome God, and is worthy to be praised. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, this is Rima Life Changing Ministries, streaming to you to Bridgeport, Connecticut um, at 663 Reservoir Avenue. And we've been looking into the text of um, Romans chapter 11. Um, we have gone through Romans 11 and tonight, um, this evening, we want to just kind of finish up um, that book and, well, that chapter rather, and look from verse 25 through to verse 36. Indeed, God is doing something awesome in the nation. God is doing something awesome in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I am truly blessed and feeling very privileged to be a part of what God is doing and a part of the move of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. And so this evening, uh, Rima Church family, I say good evening. Um, those who are joining us by way of Facebook, our friends and loved ones, I say good evening. Um, you know, get your Bibles and let us go to the, the Word of God and what God has to say. At this time, let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you. We, are, we honor you, God, for you are an awesome God. We pray even now, Lord God, that even as I sit, God, and look into your word, I pray that you would sanctify me even now, God, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I pray, God Almighty, that you would sanctify my heart, my thoughts, my mind. Oh, Heavenly Father, I place them all in your hands, even now, my entire being. I pray, God, that even as you purify me, Lord God, I pray that you will use me as a vessel, a vessel of honor for you, God, and that you will speak to me and speak through me and that you'll open up my eyes and my understanding that even as we dive into your word, God, that Heavenly Father, your spirit will speak and that your spirit will move and have free reign. I pray for those who would come across this, oh God, link that is not even tuning in now, God, but Father, whenever they do, I pray that the anointing of God's word, that your anointing will minister to their hearts and that the truth that is being taught and the, the truth and the, the, the mistress that is being revealed, your wisdom that is being revealed through your word, that Heavenly Father, of a truth, of a truth, oh God, it will be imputed in them and that they will receive, oh God, the blessings and the benefit of your word. I pray for now, Lord God, that you would just have thine own way, O oh God, even as we look into the scriptures. Heavenly Father, we pray, God, that you will speak directly to us and clearly in a profound way. Have thine own way, even now, God, as we surrender all things to you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, tell somebody, Bible studies on. Tell somebody that Reba Life Change of Ministries is streaming live and we're on Bible study. And so we, we look, we appreciate the fact that you're joining us. Um, for those of you who are on, you know, again, just, you know, like us and let us know that you are watching and that you're on with us. All right. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Let us get to the book of Romans, the, the 11th chapter. And as I said, we have read all the way through to the 24th um, verse. And tonight, we just want to pick it up from verse 25 through to the end. Praise the name of the Lord. And so the word of God reads, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit. That blindness is 
that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentile be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. Praise God. For God had concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how oh, unsearchable are his judgment, and his ways past find note. For who had known the mind of the Lord, or who had been his counselor, or who had first given to him, and it shall be recompense unto him again. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Those are some cutting words. <laughs> Those are some real words. Those are some tough questions that we have, have been asked of us. And um, the answers can be somewhat frightening and the answer can be somewhat scary. Because the truth is God is God and nothing changes that. God remains God, and you know, even as it is closed out, you know, all things were made by Him and for His glory. All things, it doesn't matter what we think or what we feel, but all things were made by Him, for Him, and for that we give Him glory. We don't fully understand it. It doesn't really matter whether we understand it or not. It doesn't change the fact that God created all things and all things are created for his glory. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so to just continue and, and, and do just a, a brief recap of last week and where we ended. Um, we pretty much ended um, at verse 24 where it was talking about um, the the fruitless branch and all the fruitless branch which we said was the Gentile was grafted into the um, this good tree or a tree that is fruitful and that is somewhat contrary to 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 customs it is contrary to nature it it goes against everything we believe or everything we know but it is God's doing right and and so when people look at that uh, people want to say well you know um god why would i want to bring something that is unproductive into something that is so productive it's gonna mess everything up and god says i can take the messed up things and i can make that messed up thing become a message that will win souls and speak to, to millions and they would understand. And, and so it was that we as Gentile being that fruitless branch was grafted into the good tree, the good tree of God's plan and God's salvation. And, and as branches, we were connected to the root. And because the root is a good root and, and it produces, it causes the branch to produce good fruit and it's fruitful. You know, it, it made us into God's plan. And we're looking at the contrast as the, the children of Israel or the Jews. They were the chosen branches, the fruitful branch. But because of unbelief, God plucked them off and God 
tear them off and rip them off just as though you would when you're pruning a rose if uh, you know for, for you to get the full benefit and for the rose to grow it has to go through some pruning and and so it is when you want to control um, whether it be plants or make the plant go in, in the direction you want it to go um, you, you tend to do some pruning when it's not bearing or you know pop blooming flowers as, as you'd like you you begin to prune and so you're cut and everything is so anything that is dead you're cutting the dead things off and it is no different if if we are of god and we're connected to the root and we're not bearing any fruit it, then it means we are fruitless and if we are fruitless we are wasting time and so we need to be chopped off so that you know he can attach another branch that is going to be fruitful and so he did with us the gentiles and it, you know they because the jews and the children of israel through their unbelief did not want to accept jesus christ as as the savior then us the gentile had that opportunity where gentiles are called children of god what an awesome thing had it not been you and i would not have that opportunity and so we thank god for that and so you know we, we, we look at that where it goes against customs. It is contrary to, to the natural mind. But the word of God says that he uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And so do not be wise in your own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes. But we want to be wise in the things of God. We want to be full of wisdom, even as God give us that wisdom. We don't want wisdom from the, from from a book. Uh, we don't want wisdom from the theory of physics and and everything. And while while that is great, we want the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The Bible still said that Solomon was the wisest man, and he's the wisest man. And there's going to be none other who's going to be wiser than Solomon. It doesn't matter how bright people think they are and how wise, there is none. Solomon was the wisest, and he got that wisdom from God. And so, if you and I ask. Because God said he would be the wisest, we, we will not be wiser than him, but I believe we could be as wise as him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so we move from verse 24, and now we're jumping into verse 25. And verse 25 says, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Oftentimes when we don't understand something, we tend to just sweep it under the rug or, you know, become ignorant. I mean, we, we don't want to know about it. But, you know... Because we don't want to know about something, that is not ignorance. Ignorance is the lack of knowledge. And we don't have to be lack, lacking knowledge. Why? Because the knowledge is here in the word of God. It is here. The information is there. It's for us to spend time to get that information, to obtain that knowledge, and to ask God for the revelation and when God gives the revelation, no, that knowledge is, is seated in our heart and we can abide by the word of God and operate under the wisdom and the functioning of God's word. And so now we, the mystery, we don't want to be ignorant of this mystery. Lest he should be wise in, in your own conceit. That blindness, that same conceit, that same ignorance in part is what happened to Israel. Until the fullness of the Gentile be coming and so because israel rejected christ because israel rejected the notion the gospel of grace that it's not of works it is about grace and it's about god's election and 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 he chooses to save whomever he wills and you can't work for it but when he sent jesus christ jesus christ became a stumbling block to the jews you know this this son of a carpenter how could he be deliverer? How could he be the savior? How could he speak such blasphemy to talk about? He is the son of Yahweh, our living God. And so because of that, it became this blindness. They could not accept him and they didn't believe in him. And it became a blindness and that became a stumbling block to them. And so in the New Living Translation, it reads, I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters, so that you will not feel proud about yourself. Some of the people of Israel have hard hearts, but this will last only until the full number of Gentiles come to Christ. And so all Israel will be saved, as the scripture says, the one who rescues will come from Jerusalem 
and he will turn Israel away from ungodliness. So the, the, the mystery, when, when you think of it, as we look through the, 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 this chapter of um, Romans 11, Paul started out by saying, listen, you know, I want you to pray for Israel that Israel will come into the full knowledge of who Jesus is. So the mystery here is Israel partial hardening. Their hearts becoming hardened or the blindness that has that's taken them. And because of this partial hardening, and, and the reason I'm saying it's partial because God still said he had a remnant. Can't forget that. There's a remnant who is saved through the election of grace. Right? Even though Israel was partially hardened. Right? Some believe and those who weren't believed, they were blinded. Um, is, is what we've been talking about and what we learned in, um, the chap in chapter 11. And so you have this partial hardening and you also have the inclusion of the Gentiles as part of God's people. That's a mystery. Oh, God would have chosen them because of unbelief and there's a remnant. No, God fast forward or sped up the plan and the Gentiles receive Jesus through grace, as, as, as the Apostle Paul says, I am an apostle to the Gentiles. And now you also have a third part to the mystery, and that is the, the, the future role of, of Israel. Israel's future role in God's plan of salvation. Because God has not rejected his chosen. He has not. And so, you know, it's it's it's... But when you think of it, man, the, the word of God, I, I love it because how God does what he does and you can't even question him. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to you, but it makes perfect sense when you get the revelation and the wisdom comes. And so, you know, in, in, in verse 26, it, it tells of Israel placing God's redemptive plan by looking into the future restoration of all Israel. And so, you know, so all Israel will be saved. As the scripture says, they will be saved because the rescuer or the deliverer is going to come. And when he comes, he's going to turn them away from ungodliness. That deliverer we are talking about is Jesus Christ. When you think about Israel and all Israel in this text, it, it could be a couple of things, right? All Israel could be the individual within the ethnic or individuals within the ethnic um, is um, Israel. Or you can think of it as Abraham's natural descendants. Or it could also be symbolic of God's elect, which means both Jews and Gentiles. right? But all Israel will be saved when the deliverer comes. And, and that is not something that we are guessing. It is a promise. The word of God speaks and it is a promise. God's words are yea and their amen. And so the, the deliverer came in the person of Christ. And, you know, if we may look at this as this Zion, which refers to you now the heavenly Jerusalem, where Christ will return as a deliverer, where this Jerusalem is going to be burned up and no more, and a new Jerusalem is going to come down, the scripture says, and Christ is going to reign. He is that new deliverer who is going to come in, in his stead. And so as we, as we think about that, that Christ is going to come and he's going to turn them away from ungodliness. And, you know, Paul alluded to the salvation of a remnant of Israel. Right. So while they are blinded and while because of unbelief they have gone away, there is still a remnant. And, and when you look, you know, you look at verse um, chapter nine and verse 27, um, it says that, you know, Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Though the number of the children be the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. So as big as they are, a remnant is saved by grace, the election of grace. And then if you go back to chapter 5 and look at ver chapter 11 rather and look at verse 5, you know, it says, Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of of grace and we talk about you know how paul saw himself as part of this remnant because he was a jew right from the tribe of benjamin 
and 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 Paul received Christ and Paul spoke about you know when it came on to the law Paul said touching the law is blameless but as far as grace is concerned man he understood what it meant to be saved by grace and had it not been for the grace of God when you think about it Paul says I persecuted the church but God's grace and, and, and what God said to him that, hey, the things you're going to go through for my sake, the things you're going to go through for the sake of the gospel. Paul understood grace. And so that is why Paul counted himself the apostle of grace, the apostle to the Gentiles. And so if we, if we look at verse 27, moving on, you know, in the, in the King James Version, it reads, For this is my covenant unto them. When, when I shall take away their sins. And verse 20, says, it says, As concerning the gospel, they were enemies for your sake. For whose sake? For the sake of the Gentiles. Concerning the gospel, Israel, the Jewish nation, they, were, they are enemies for our sake, for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Let, let's let's think about that for a moment. Let's think about that for a moment. You know, it is the mystery, Paul says, is don't forget. I want you to understand the mystery. The mystery of how because the, 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 the children of Israel rejected Jesus, rejected the gospel. The Jews accepted it. And the, and, 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 and the Jews would have accepted it. And God said that he was going to cause, because the Jews accepted it, he was going to cause the, I mean, because the Gentile rather accepted it, he was going to cause the Jews to be jealous. And because of that jealousy, they would have come into the saving knowledge. And their eyes would have been open. Right. And, and so, you know, sometimes when, you know, your brothers and your sisters are going through and, and they're feeling sluggish and they don't feel as if they want to continue. Sometimes you have to provoke them unto godliness, provoke them unto righteousness, stir them up, you know. And, and, and so, you know, the scripture tells us that, you know, if a brother is caught in a fall, that sometimes you have to withdraw yourself from him, pull yourself away so that the fact that they don't have that. That friendship, the fact that they don't have that comfort and that level of, of security or, or bond with you. And now they are by themselves and kind of separated so the enemy can buffet them. And when the enemies begin to buffet them, then they'll begin to miss the friendship. But there's a reason for the buffeting. That their soul would be saved in the end. Sometimes when you're in when you're in the comfort that you that you have and you have friends who don't want to tell you the truth and everything else, you become so comfortable that wrong, just doing wrong becomes the norm and it's no big deal. You don't have that sense of conviction. You don't feel outside. You just become comfortable with, with, with the situation you're in. Sometimes you have to withdraw your, yourself from there so that that sense of comfort that you would have given is no longer there. And now persons or that person will begin to look into themselves and, and begin to wonder, hey, what's going on? Something has happened. Something has changed. Yes, something has changed. And, you know, you have to take yourself out of that. So sometimes just allowing someone to not experience or enjoy that, that comfort level is good for them. Because as long as you're comfortable, you will not want to change. But when you become uncomfortable... Whether you want to change or not, it's going to force you to change. And so God was using the Gentile to make the Jews jealous. And so this is what the scripture is talking about here. That, you know, for as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved by the fa for the Father's sake. They are beloved for the Father's sake. They are beloved because of Abraham. Abraham's sake. Abraham's promise. Abraham's faith. Abraham believed God. And God selected them. God chose them. And there is nothing that you and I can say that's going to change what God has put in place. You know, I, I, I look at it from the New Living Translation version. It says, and this is my covenant with them. That I will take away their sins. That's God's covenant with Israel. 
It's a covenant. A covenant is not a contract. A covenant is something that is sealed in blood. And, and so you, you can't just change a covenant or get rid of a covenant. A covenant is there. And, you know, sometimes we as men, we would make covenants and we break them. Like a marriage is a covenant. And so many marriages end up in, in divorce. And we break those covenants. But God is not like man. God does break his covenant. And so that is why the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. God cannot break that covenant. Whatever God says, he is obligated to do. And God will do because he is a, not a man that he should lie. And so, you know, he says this is the covenant. And verse 20 goes on to say, Many of the people of Israel are now enemies of the good news, which is the gospel. And this benefits you. This benefits us as Gentile. And, and Paul had said to us earlier, not because the Jew or the children of Israel had unbelief. And we who believe have this salvation. We shouldn't skin up our nose. We, we shouldn't feel proud and, and look down on them and, and everything else. But, you know, we ought to be grateful lest we find ourselves falling in the same trap as the children of Israel, the Jews, and God now has to cut us off as a branch. And so we never want to get there. We never want to be proud. We never want to be boasters that, oh, you know, oh, God chose us and look at you, God. No. No. We, we want to have an understanding and we want to appreciate the fact that, yes, Jesus came, brought salvation to the Jews. The Jews rejected and so it fast forward, Gentiles receive, but there is a covenant that God has with Jewish nation. There's a covenant that God has with the children of Israel. And, you know, yet they are still the people he loves because he chose their ancestor, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So because of the father's sake, they are still the election of God. And because they are the election of God, God is not going to cut them off. God is not going to forget about them. And, and you look at verse, you know, 28, and it kind of points you back to Romans 9 verse 11. It's for, where it says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. Listen, referring to Abraham as the patriarch, referring to, you know, Isaac and referring to Jacob, um, you know, whom God chose to bear his promise back then. This is what this is about. That, you know, for them, the gospel, they were enemies to the gospel. And so the gospel was preached to the Gentile we receive. But concerning the election, God's chosen, hey, for their father's sake, they are elected. And, and nothing is going to change that because God has a covenant with them. And that covenant is to save them. That covenant is to cause them to turn away from sin. That covenant is to pull them back to himself. And that has not changed. Right? But we benefit from that. We benefit from the fact that they are the enemy of, of, the, of the gospel. But because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, um, God is going to honor his election. And, and, and you look at what verse you know, 29, and, and, and I, I, as it comes to me, I just want to stick this in, that at the end of the day, the bottom line is, God chooses people, whomever he wants, for his own purpose. So God can choose anybody, anytime, for his purpose. And we have to understand that. It's not about how educated they are. It's not about how great is their work, ethics. It, none of that. God chooses people for his 
own purpose. And so the question we need to ask or the, the thing we need to desire more than anything else is to understand your purpose. What is my purpose? God, what is the purpose that you have chosen me so that I could live in that purpose? Because only when I'm living in that purpose will I find satisfaction. Only when I'm living in that purpose will I find everything I need in this life, happiness, um, fulfillment, name it. When I am fulfilling my purpose that God has chosen me for, I will be satisfied. 100%. 100% satisfaction. Because God chooses us and God builds us and God makes us for his purpose and for his use. And so you look at verse 29. You know, as you get into verse 29, let me tell you something. You know, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For the gift and calling of God are without repentance. In the New Living Translation, it says, For God's gift and his call can never be withdrawn. It can never be withdrawn. God doesn't make mistake. God doesn't... It, 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 listen, it's not like whereas, you know, you, you, you choose someone to do or to play a role and, and six months in our six days in you're like, oh my God, this person can't do it. Oh, I, I have made a mistake. And so now you're going to go and apologize and you're going to put someone else in that role. No, that's not so with God. God's gift and calling are without repentance. It cannot be withdrawn. And so men fail God. We will fail God. Man fail him all the time. But the gift and the calling is still there. And so that is why you still have people who are functioning in certain office based on the gift and the call. But their living is not up to par. And, and that is why, you know, Paul, the, the apostle put it this way, he says, I don't want to preach to others while I myself be a castaway. If that wasn't possible, he would have never said that. And so God's gifting and calling is without repentance. And you can still be an encourager, but you will find yourself in hell. And, 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 and further on, you know, the scripture concludes that. Where, where Jesus says, on the day, on that great judgment day, many are going to come and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I cast out demons? I did this in your name. I did that in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Well, that word, I never knew you. That word knew is, is that, listen, yes, God knows us. But, you know, that word is like a husband knowing a wife. That intimacy, that relationship. I had no relationship with you. Yet you were functioning in the call. Yet you were functioning in the giftings. But as far as a relationship is concerned, I never knew you. There was no relationship there. And, and that is what we want to make sure that in all our doing, make sure we maintain that relationship with Jesus Christ. This is what it is about. It's, it's not about amassing great wealth. It's not about having great big fancy churches and sanctuary and, and all these things and ministering to thousands. And you can preach to thousands and save thousands and millions. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, those thousands and millions will be saved, but you will be lost. It's not about praying for people and, and, and they've received deliverance from demonic strongholds and, and all these things. Yes, those things are great. But having a relationship is greater. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ ought to be first and foremost. And so nothing should change that. No, 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 no amount of events, no amount of, 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 of um, traveling on trips and feeding the poor and doing all these things. None of that means nothing if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There are many people out there who we would consider good. That do all these things, feed the poor and, and look out for those less fortunate and, and make sure that they don't speak evil of anyone. But if that's as far as it goes, 
all they are is a good sinner. And there is no differentiation between a good sinner and a bad sinner. The one thing that matters that Jesus Christ knows you. And, you know, he, he knows you as, I said, a husband, no wife, that intimacy, that, that relationship. So make sure that you maintain that relationship. And so the gift and calling of God, it, is, it, it speaks to the privileges granted to Israel. Is, is really what it is. It, it is the privilege granted to Israel. And for you and I, it is the privilege granted to us. Right? We get that privilege because God's calling and gifts are also upon us. God calls us Gentile and he gives us gifts. And those gifts is for the edifying of the body. Right? And so sometimes, you know, we will look and we'll say, well, this person isn't living holy and this person's lifestyle is no good. But God can use that person to speak to you, to speak truth to you. I, I don't have time to tell you, but listen, if, if God could use a jackass to, to speak to his prophet, to set him straight, there is nothing, no one that God can't use. I have heard of story where, where God spoke to this, you know, the, there were these guys standing on, 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 on the corner in Jamaica and they had gone over to this other um, part of the city and they had just shut up the city and, you know, while they're standing out there, um, you know, one of the guys said to, to, to this guy, man, you, you ought to go to church. You're so lucky, you should go to church. And, 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 and sure enough, you know, that young man got up and went into the church and while he went into the church, they, they, so the, these other guys from this other part of the city where they went up and, and, and shot up, came over and killed everybody on that corner. That guy, that very night, gave, him, gave his life to the Lord. Unbeknownst to him, he heard the gunshots happening um, on the outside. But unbeknownst to him, knew that everybody there was dead. Well, you, you think about that. That one of that gentleman who, who told him to that he should go to church and go give his life to God. He, he was the one that witnessed to him. No, his life is lost. And the guy who went to church, his life is saved. We don't know what God is going to do. We don't know how it's going to work. And so he was used to witness to someone, but his life was lost. His life was, was, was gone. And so God's gifting and God's calling, it is a privilege. And it is without repentance. It cannot be withdrawn. So even when we fail, we can still operate in those giftings or we can still operate on those callings. But that doesn't mean that you're, that doesn't mean that, you know, heaven is your home. That doesn't mean heaven is your destination. The one thing that guarantees that is your relationship and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so, you know, ver chapter 9 verse 4 says, they are people of Israel chosen to be God's adopted children. God revealed his glory to them. He made covenant with them and gave them his law. He gave them the privilege of worshiping him, worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises. That's it. It's a privilege that God gave. And we have that same privilege. We have that privilege where we have been adopted as God's children. We have that privilege where God revealed his glory to us. We have that privilege where God made that covenant with us. That if we accept Jesus Christ, hey, relationship, heaven is going to be at home. We have that same privilege that we can worship him. And the Bible says that, you know, when we worship the Lord, oh, when we worship him, he comes down in our presence. He comes down in our midst. Right, and, and we have that same privilege of receiving the wonderful promises of God. Praise God. And, and so the same privilege that was granted to Israel and the Jews, we have those same privileges. And whether we have a relationship or continue in that calling and gifting, guess what? We can still function in it, but we can still be lost. And so we want to make sure that we function in the calling and in the gifting of God, but make sure that our relationship, our relationship is key and most critical. And so you look at verse 30, it says, For as ye in times past have not believed God, ye have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. It, it, goes, it goes there again. Because of, the, because of Israel disobedience, because of Israel rejection of Jesus, 
we have obtained mercy because we have received Jesus Christ. We have received the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And so because they disobeyed, because of their unbelief, we obtained mercy. And, and, and so when you look at verse 31, it just kind of runs into the same thing. Even so, have these also no not believe? So the, 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 the Israelites, they have not believed. And those who were blinded, they have not believed. But because of our belief and the mercy that we have received, it's going to cause jealousy on them. And because of that jealousy, they're going to want to turn from their evil ways. And they're going to want to accept this Jesus Christ. They're going to want to accept him. And so, you know, we, we have the saying that, man, you know, if I knew then what I know now, I would have served him and surrender a long time ago. We all say that, right? And, and, and the truth is, it's, it's that same thing where Israel is now looking at the blessings and, and, and the wonderful promises that the Gentiles are receiving and seeing that the Gentiles were, uh, you know, were branches of a wild olive and they were the original olive branches. And they're like, man, if they, if they can be receiving all this, what about me? What about us? And so for us to receive, we have to turn from our wicked ways. And, and that's what it is all about. Repentance. At the, at the end of the day, repentance. Turn from your unbelief and believe and, and accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Accept Jesus Christ as, as salvation. And not about trying to work for it. But understand, it is by grace that you saved. And, and that's what it boils down to. And so, you know... Even so have these also not believe that through your mercy, the mercies shown to the Gentiles, they also may obtain mercy. It is, it is critical that we understand that. It is critical that, you know, the same way God planned on using Israel to lead us and to show us, Israel rejected we receive, God is going to use us to bring Israel back. It's all in this plan. It is all in the plan of God. And so we jump down to verse 32. And it says, For God had concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon them all. The New Living Translation puts it this way, For God has imprisoned everyone in disobedience. So he could have mercy on everyone. And, you know, at the end of the day, the everyone here, the all here is us. We, we all, we all were imprisoned in disobedience. And because of that, he could show all of us mercy. And so he chose, he selected Israel as that people, as that nation. To lead us, to be the example. And when Israel rejected Jesus, he chose us. And now he's using us. And the mercy that he has shown us to show Israel, if you turn from your wicked ways, if you turn from disobedience, if you turn from unbelief, I'll welcome you back also. And so it's a consistent message. Everyone was imprisoned in disobedience so that mercy can be shown to everyone so you can't say well i'm more special or because i was born here no 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 no. everyone imprisoned in disobedience so that mercy can be shown on everyone and so you know verse 33 and verse 34 oh i love it it says oh great are god's riches and wisdom and knowledge oh impossible it is for us to understand his decision and his ways. His ways are so high above our ways. His thoughts are so vast. And, you know, it's man, just because of our sinful nature, we can never understand. We, we can never fathom. We can never, you know, un until our minds are transformed and renewed and our, and our, our spirit is, 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 is reborn. Whereas he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. We can't begin to understand or fathom God. You know, I still love the, 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 the King James Version. Still love it. Where King James put it this way. Oh, the depths of his riches, 
both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. He, oh man, he has such depth. Oh, unsearchable are his judgment and his ways past finding out. You can search from now until eternity, man, and it's like you're just scratching the surface. His wisdom is so vast. His knowledge is so great. My God, you can't search it. You don't have enough time to search it. This is who we are talking about. And so his ways are perfect. We can't understand it. And just in case you think that, ah, you know, that's just mere words. And all right, let's, let's go to verse 34. Verse 34 says, For who had known the mind of the Lord? Or who had been his counselor? Every great man, I mean, you have presidents and all of them. They all have counselors. Every great man you have, listened, you have heard in this life have had counselors. I mean, great kings have had counselors. Priests have had counselors. The only priest who has never had a counselor is Jesus Christ, who is known as the, high, the chief high priest. He, is all, he, he himself is wisdom. And so he has all wisdom in him. And because of that, he doesn't need counsel from anyone. And so if he doesn't need counsel from anyone, then his judgment ought to be perfect. His judgment is final. His judgment is perfect. His judgment, you can't even understand it. And so when, when he says that, listen, I'm going to choose Israel. Nobody can say, you can't choose Israel. If he had said that, I'm going to choose people in Jamaica. Nobody can say, oh, they, they're so bad and they're terrible and whatever. It doesn't matter. That's his choice. And he has the right to. Because his ways are perfect. And because he doesn't have to give account to anyone other than himself. He doesn't need counsel from anyone. And so anytime you can counsel someone, then you can tell them, oh, what you're doing is wrong. But you can never counsel God. You can never counsel Christ because he's, you know, his ways are perfect. And so verse 35 and verse 36, just wrapping it up, it says, you know, or who had first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The New Living Translation from verse 34 puts it this way. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to give him advice? <laughs> and, and, and who has given him so much that he needs to repay it back? For everything comes from him and exists by his power and is intended for his glory. That settles it. All glory to him forever. Amen. So God is all knowing. We can't counsel him. We can't question what he does. His selection is perfect. His ways are perfect. And so from all of this, I hope that we conclude a couple of things. Yes, that God chosen elected people, Jews and Gentiles. We have received the gospel of grace. Nation of Israel, sorry, outside of the remnant, were blinded because of their unbelief. And God says, I'm not done with them. The deliverer is going to come and the deliverer is going to cause them to turn from their sin. And so Paul is encouraging us that we ought to pray for them. And I'm encouraging you, not only pray for them, but pray for your loved ones. Because now, God, we can receive God's plan of salvation whether you're Jew or Gentile. We all can receive it. And so, if you're in disobedience, then God can show you mercy. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. He will show you mercy. And, and sometimes we look and say, well, these people have done such horrible crimes and how could God forgive them? Hey, He chooses whom He chooses for His purpose. He shows mercy to whom he will show mercy. And, and because you and I, we, we are not perfect, we can't say a word other than, Lord, to you be glory and honor. Why? Why is that? Because verse 36 put it this way. For of him and through him and to him are all things. He created all things for his glory and for his pleasure. And so that settles it. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so thank you for joining us this evening in our Bible studies. 
Um, we thank God that you were able to join us and um, enjoy this time. I do enjoy my time with you on Facebook. For those of you, for the encouragement you give and for the, the posts and comments you give, um, it is rather um, encouraging. And so we, we thank the Lord for you. We look forward to the time when we could get back into the sanctuary so we can go back and forth and, 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 and share and um, you know have the different insight. And so to God be the glory, great things he has done. Um, next week, we're going to start um, chapter chapter 12 but you know continue to pray for for the for the is for israel continue to pray for brothers and sisters then and for those who don't know christ that they will come into the saving knowledge of who he is glory be to god hallelujah this time why don't you join me in prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for your people. We thank you for this time that is spent in your word. We thank you for your revelation knowledge. We pray, God, that you'd have given insight and that you'd have given revelation knowledge. I pray even now for your wisdom that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you even now, God. I pray for everyone who spend the time to, to be a part of this. I pray that the blessings of the Lord will be upon them immensely and richly, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for this nation. I pray for the world that we are living in. Oh God, if there's ever a time that the world world need to turn their attention to you. I pray God that as they turn their attention to you, that they will see us and that they will see the life that we live, God, that it will be consistent and that it will speak to someone greater than us. And that someone is you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we know it's not about God and, and, and everyone will accept God, but may we be cognizant of the fact that when we speak, we speak of Jesus Christ and Him crucified because you are the suffering servant. You are Jesus the Christ, the, the living God. And so you said in your word that no one coming to the Father except through me. And so, Father God, may we speak of Jesus. Uh, may we convince men and women that Jesus Christ is the only way to truth and the life. And so have your way in us. Encourage us. Give us the strength, the courage. Give us the boldness to stand and to declare despite the odds, despite what is happening around us. Uh, and Heavenly Father, that we look up continually to you our redemption joy at night. We give you thanks and we give you praise even now in Jesus' precious name. Thank you for joining us um, by way of announcement. Um, right after we're going to be going on our conference line prayer, the number again is 480-297-0773. Let me repeat, 480-297-0773. And the participation code is 368-3305-368-3305 pound. We look forward in, in hearing from you. We look forward in you joining us. And again, please remember joining us at 10 a.m. this Sunday, Rima Life Changer Ministries streaming live to you coming out of Connecticut or Morning Divine Worship. We look forward to um, you joining us. We look forward to you sharing it with um, Facebook and liking us and telling someone about us and what God is doing. Hallelujah. Please send us a post. Send us, share your testimony of, of, of how God is, is using this ministry to impact and to touch your life and to strengthen your walk and to strengthen your faith. And so may God bless you continually. Just know that we love you with the love of the Lord and know that there is nothing too hard for God to do, that God specializes is an impossible and God wants to turn your mess into a message. God bless you. We love you. Have an awesome day. Join us on our prayer line. God bless you. Thank you much.